last session, we started multimodal learning. And can somebody tell me why we are doing multimodal? I motivated it last session when we were doing GPT-3. Yeah, I think we're trying to get to general intelligence. Exactly. Uh, the one problem or one criticism for GPT-3, there are many criticisms about it, but one of the criticisms is that if it's talking about something, it has no idea or it has never seen it or it has never heard about it. It has only read the internet about the existence of, for instance, airplanes, but it has never seen it. Or for instance, if you want to build a robot and you want to interact with it and say, pick that thing up and put it on the table, then it has no idea what that or these refers to unless you show it some image, unless it has some vision built into, the, built into its brain. So that's why we are moving towards multimodal where you can process not only images, but you can, but also text, but also speech, et cetera. And it's exactly what you said. We are moving towards general AI. So we are getting a little bit more ambitious compared to what we have been doing so far. Uh, and we are taking baby steps. One of the baby steps is this paper that we started last session. It's long-term recurrent convolutional neural networks. Uh, as I mentioned, don't worry about this figure. I'm going to explain it more. Uh, and the type of activities that we are going to start with or the type of tasks are, for instance, activity recognition. A video goes in and you want to know the corresponding label. For instance, uh, this label here is applying eye makeup. Or you can do image description. Somebody gives you an image and then you are asking the computer to describe it for you. Or you can have video description. A video goes in and a sequence of words is going to come out. Mathematically, uh, you're going to have a sequence of tensors because each image is a tensor. So this is going to be a video. A sequence of images is going to give you a video. So it's a time series of sequences. It's a time series of images. And each image is a tensor. And uh, a sequence goes in. And you want to know the corresponding label. So this is sort of a classification task, and this is activity recognition. The other one, image description, an image goes in and a sequence of words is going to come out, or a sequence of tokens, a sequence of numbers. The video description, a sequence of images goes in, and a sequence of words is going to come out, out of the machine learning framework. Or it could be the other way around. For instance, uh, a sequence of words can go in, and then you're going to generate images or generate video if you are a little bit more ambitious, et cetera. So now your machine is starting to imagine, it's starting to dream. So let's go a little bit more into details. We have a visual input. That's your visual input. Each T is going to be an image. It's a tensor. But then working with images is hard, the same way that working with tokens was hard for languages. So we need to turn them into vectors. So one way to turn them into vectors is CNNs. So we are going to use a convolutional neural network. The type doesn't matter. These sorts of things we cover, we study a lot in part one of the course. Uh, an image goes in, and in the end, a vector is going to come out. An image goes in, a vector in RD is going to come out. So you, now you can think of your CNN as a feature extractor. Now you turned your images or your video into a bunch of vectors, a time series of vectors. Uh, forget about this LSTM for a second. The prediction part, you are going to either output sentences. So per each of these uh, weights, you're going to have a word that you're outputting. Or it could be classification, like what you have here. And then maybe you can use the last entry to output your probability. This could be the number of classes, or this could be the size of your vocabulary. And then the recurrent neural network that we are doing here is, uh, I'm not going to go into details because we covered it. We have been doing a lot of language. But now your X, the input, are going to be the outputs of these CNS. So are going to be these fees. And then H is the hidden state of your recurrent neural network. And Z is going to be what is coming out of here or maybe what it is what you are passing to the next layer of your LSTM. Because LSTMs could be deep in time, like what you have here, and deep in uh, space. 
you can have multiple stacks of LSTMs. And then uh, LSTMs, I'm not gonna go into details. We covered it. You have input gate, for, forget gate, output gate, the information that you currently receive. And then you are, this is your cell gate. And then some parts of your cell gate, you're gonna output to your hidden state. And then hidden state is the one that you're gonna use to pass information from one LSTM to the other LSTM, as well as Cs actually. So there is this data set, UCF 101. You have 101 activities that your machine needs to distinguish among. You have the activity recognition task. A video goes in and you want to know the corresponding label. For instance, applying eye makeup. So that's that data set. I want you to explore it because it's good. It's going to give you images and it's going to give you videos and uh, the target label. And uh, when you are doing videos, there is a, we spend at least one week in part one of the course studying videos. You have the option to take a single frame of your video, for instance, this frame, and that could be your benchmark. You ignore everything else. You just take one image out of your video and then push it through your CNN and then do a classification. That's gonna give you a benchmark to start with. And these are the numbers that you need to beat. And in terms of your input data for videos, you have the option to process pure red, green, blue videos, or you have the option to work with the opt optical flow. And the optical flow is gonna be for each image. You can obtain it from uh, this image and the next image. So two consecutive snapshots. That's gonna give you the movement of your pixels, the movements of these, the, the person. It's gonna give you a vector, or per each pixel, it's gonna give you a vector. So it's gonna have the X component, it's gonna have the Y component, and it's gonna give you the movement. So you can either process red, green, blue, or you can process the optical flow. And these are gonna be the numbers that you're gonna to need to beat. Or you can have a weighted average of these two as your input. For instance, one half of red, green, blue, one half of your optical flow, or one third of red, green, blue, or two third of flow. That's your input, your CNN, and the output is the class or the label. If you use LRCN, the method that is being advocated in this paper, you're gonna get improvements because now you have all of these. Not only one snapshots, you have multiple snapshots that you're processing. And in terms of fully connected six, fully connected seven, these are the layers that you're gonna cut your CNN because your CNN uh, could be very deep, and then usually the last layers are fully connected. You can say, I'm gonna use the first fully connected or the second fully connected. So this is the first fully connected, this is the second fully connected. And six is just the depth of your neural network up until that point, or seven is the total depth of this feature extractor. And this data set, I want you to study it, it has multiple splits. If you use only one split, split one, these are your results. If you train it on all of the splits, these are gonna be your results. So this is just more data. That's activity recognition. A video goes in, a label is gonna come out. Image description, an image goes in, a description is gonna come out. A sentence is gonna come out. And there are two data sets, Flickr 30K and Microsoft Cocoa 2014 that you can explore. Again, the same way that for translation, you could have multiple good translations. For image description, you can have multiple good uh, descriptions. So multiple different sentences could describe an image equally good. That's why we are gonna work with the blue score, the same way that we had blue score for translation. And then LRCN is beating the previous state of the art. In terms of the blue score and this B1, B2, B3, B4, if you remember, in your blue score, you could include uh, unigrams, bigrams, trigrams, etc. So that's what it means. For the retrieval task, it is search. You give an image, and then you want to find in your data set the best description for this image. This is a little bit different from image description. Here, you know your descriptions. You have a data set of descriptions, and now you can score them given this image among these descriptions, which ones are the best? Can you list them for me? It's the same thing that you do when you do a search on Google. You look for a sentence or you can look for, a, for an image and then a bunch of results are gonna get sorted for you. We usually click on the first one, but maybe the 10th result from Google is the best. 
corresponding to what you're looking for. And the way that you're going to score this, you're going to score pairs of images and captions using the probability model that is coming out of here, out of this softmax. So you always get a conditional probability. What is the probability of this sentence conditioned on the input image? Or the other way around, what is the probability of this image conditioned on uh, this sentence, this caption? And you might wonder, what is this R1, R5, R10, and med R? So med R is the median rank. So you're, for instance, you're looking uh, for a particular image. And that image in your search is going to appear, the ground truth is going to appear as the 10th outcome or the fifth outcome or the fourth, or it's the first outcome. So recall that one is gonna give you a positive uh, thumbs up if, you are, uh, if your ground truth is appearing in your first search. If it's appearing among the top five, then you're gonna give it a, a thumbs up. You're gonna say, okay, Google or this retrieval system, you did a good job. You count it as positive. Otherwise it's negative result. So as you can see, this is more relaxed. R1 is a harder, score compared to R5, compared to R... Actually, I was explaining the recall, but you get the idea. R1 is a harder score compared to R5, compared to R10. What I just explained was recall. This is the total number of images or captions that are correctly appearing in the, in the top one results, or in the top five results, or in the top 10 results. And med R is just a rank of the ground truth. You're looking for something and it is appearing in the fourth place. Sometimes it is appearing in the first place and then you do the median of those numbers. So for recall, the higher is better. And for median rank, the lower is better because you want your result to appear on the first page of your Google search rather than on the 10th page, okay? Is everything clear so far in terms of the metrics? The question I had was about the... Um, uh the dimensions of the RGB versus the flow. Do you have a three-dimensional flow vector that's uh, for all three channels at the same time? So that so the dimensions match? For up? RGB, an image is going to be, I don't know, 256 by 256 by three channels, red, green, blue. For flow, it's going to be 256 by 256. These are the number of pixels, the height and the width of your image. Mm -hmm. And then the flow has two components. The X component of your flow, the Y component of your flow. And then you can concatenate them or you can add them together. I guess that's, that's the part that doesn't make sense. Like then how, how do you take an RGB triple and average it with a flow double? So this, you can have multiple streams. If you remember, I, I know that you were in part one of the course. Yeah. Uh, for that, when you had a video, you could have two streams. One stream is processing the red, green, blue. The other stream is processing flow. And then in the end, you can average them out. You can average the probabilities out. Ah, OK. OK? So, so no, it's not happening at the pixel level. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's appearing at the classification level, the probabilities. Processing first and then averaging the outputs. OK, that makes yeah. sense. Thank you. No, that's a good question. And then uh, for video description, the problem is that you don't have enough data. So somebody needs to sit down and describe a video because a video goes in and then somebody needs to describe it. So you don't have that much data for that task. So you could, in principle, apply this framework, long-term recurrent convolutional neural network. You can process an image and a video, push it through a bunch of LSTMs, and then output the uh, sentence. You could, in principle, do that. But this paper, at that time, didn't have enough data, so they said, First, we are going to turn these images into a sentence or a bunch of words. I don't know. There is a man here. There is a there is shoe here. There is tying going on, etc. So you turn your image into a bunch of phrases using the classical machine learning techniques, like conditional random field. You do that, and then you take that sentence and you push it through your LSTMs and then get a sentence out. So this is not the main reason that I'm covering this paper, but... If you want to learn about it, you can read the paper in more details. So you take your visual input, you do your some CRF on it, you get a bunch of words, person uh, caught cutting board, you give those vectors to your LSTM. So it's gonna be the same vectors to your LSTMs. 
and then your LSTM is going to output a man cut on the board. Okay, any questions before I move on? <laughs> 